rich, buttery, decadent, smoked crab dip with a bit of sterling caviar on top. This is an incredible celebration of the ocean uh, in a sustainable manner. I love this dish, perfect for any special occasion or any Tuesday. Let's get in the game. Folks, you've heard me say it time and time again, simple things done perfectly win every time. So we've got some very delicate flavors, uh, but I wanna talk about good smoke because we have such incredible ingredients like crab, like caviar, you don't wanna mess it up with bad smoke. It's super easy with a Kamada Joe to get good, clean smoke. What I'm gonna do is just give ourselves access to the, to the fire. And we're gonna put this wood chunk in those glowing embers in the hottest part of the fire. And we're gonna wait and get this out of the way so you can see it a little more. Get it, nestle it right in there. I'm talking minimal amounts of charcoal, good airflow. And see how it's burning on the outside right now? You can't even really see the smoke because it's so transparent. And yet, what's coming off of there, the fumes that are coming off of there are what's called blue smoke. And that's what's gonna really start to season our cream cheese. I'm getting notes right now, and that's a piece of pecan. So we're gonna do a pecan smoked crab dip with sterling caviar. I'm really excited. Notice we've got combustion, and what we don't have is that big plumy billowy smoke. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get our cream cheese on the grill. And what I wanna do here is create surface area. So the heat is going to soften things for us. Listen to those chickens go in the background, that's great. Ain't no good things are about to happen. We got some eggs from earlier. Yeah, we did. They're just showing signs of appreciation. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what they're saying. <laughs> so notice how I'm kind of making a bowl of the cream cheese in the bowl. Uh, and that's creating more surface area for that good smoke. And look at those wispy, flames coming off that wood chunk. So now I'm gonna shut the dome and let that smoke fill the chamber and adhere to all that surface area. Again, when we're dealing with smoke, we wanna treat it like a very powerful seasoning. This is gonna be incredible. We're gonna let that beautiful smoke adhere to that cream cheese for about two more minutes. And while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and slice our baguettes. A little serrated knife here, going about a quarter of an inch thick and we'll grill these uh, to get a little bit better texture and to bring out that toast flavor profile. So we'll do two separate presentations today on this. Uh, look, how, look how golden the edges are. Beautiful, slight flavor there. Let's go ahead and start utilizing that smoky flavor on our crostinis. And the same smoke that we used to season our cream cheese is now gonna slightly sear into our baguettes, really pulling this dish together. And notice as soon as I open that lid, we've got tremendous airflow, uh, everything kicked up. So what I can do is come down here to the draft door since the dome is open and close that draft door all the way, just slightly inhibiting airflow. And let's see how soft this cream cheese has gotten. It's a little more pliable. Um, so I'm gonna roll it around a little bit and then smooth it back out and give ourselves a whole nother round or layer of surface area for that smoke to adhere to. Lid down for two more minutes and then we're gonna incorporate the rest of our ingredients. All right, it's been two minutes, let's take a look. Oh yeah. Great texture on our crostinis. Nice smoke adherent on our cream cheese. Oh, I forgot a piece of bread. Don't think, and that's the good one, right? That's the long linear, you can really pipe some good crab dip onto there. Again, I'll bring up game day. If you have that great game day recipe and you wanna have the grill centric flavors to it, Smoke that cream cheese, smoke whatever the spreadable part of it is, and then make that recipe exactly like you would, and it takes it to the next level. So I've got two pounds of cream cheese here. I'm gonna go in with one pound of lump crab meat, and right there, we can be done. That's crab dip. But you know we're gonna add some more ingredients, right? Because uh, that's us. And while we're doing that, we're not gonna burn our bread. <laughs> we're not gonna do it today. So let's go ahead and pull those off. 
But look how beautiful and toasted they are. And you could, we could have put butter on there, garlic oil if we wanted to. Okay, now gently, because we're using lump crab meat, not back fin or claw, which is also acceptable, we're gonna roll that crab meat in. Not mush it, but roll it. That's a two to one ratio of cream cheese to crab. Bit of Worcestershire, fresh chopped garlic, a quarter cup of Parmesan dust, a tablespoon of Lane's Kunami. I love this stuff on seafood. Bit of sriracha, juice of a lemon, and there again, lemon juice and seafood just work together. That's a classic combination. When I chop my parsley, it's okay to get a little stem in there, but we don't want too much of that. The flavor we're looking for is right there. I'll use half of this as garnish and half within the actual mixture. Just want to make sure and roll and draw all the ingredients together. We're fully incorporating all the flavors. There's no pockets of crab or pockets of seasoning. Now before you pipe this or do anything else with it, just like when we're making sausage, it's important to go ahead and test it right now and see if we need to adjust any seasonings. Do we need it brighter? If we wanted it brighter, we would add lemon juice. Does it need to be a little more salty? If we wanted it saltier or sweeter, we'd add a little bit more kunami. Uh, a little bit uh, salt could also come from uh, more cream, or not more cream cheese, but more Parmesan cheese. All right, so let's give a taste. So good. That is so good. All right, so two separate presentations for you. First off, family style. We're gonna go ahead and put a dollop of this crab dip right into a cast iron pan. Don't smooth it out. Let there be nooks and crannies. We're gonna top with Parmesan cheese. All we're looking to do is heat that up and slightly get a browned caramelized top on that, uh, on that cheese. Okay, let's go to the individual portions now. Hang in there, team. You're doing great. I've got a pastry bag. Well, and now the pro moves right here. Now, listen, we could do a schmear. We could do a schmear, which would just be from here to here. You make it look a little better than that, chef. And nobody's going to complain about that, okay? Uh, that's a win. Sometimes you want to elevate. Sometimes you got to go over the top. All right. Pastry bag. I'm going to hold it about three to four inches and then I'm going to use a, let's call that a spider method. Tiger claw. The, the reverse tiger claw? Yeah. And now I'm holding my pastry bag. If we want to put a pastry tip in there, now's the time to do it before you put any of the filling in. And sometimes you need to cut these new bags to be to accept the, the width of the tip, but I think we're gonna be okay here. Yep. And again, tiger claw method. Reverse, reverse tiger claw. And we scoop. I'm gonna put it in, turn, and scoop. In, turn, scoop. All right, let's try right here. If we need to, we can refrigerate this so it stands up a little better, but let's see what we got. Beauty. Beauty. So let's arrange our crostinis so that we can pipe right on top of them. We could do just like we did and go straight up like a little rosette, or we can go linear with it. And let me show you what that looks like. I kind of like that. What do you think? Looks elevated. That's right. I mean, for a comparison, can we... You want to do one right next to it? Well, no, I was going to say, with the one you did first, that you said would be no problem if you want a schmear. Oh, you want the schmear? Oh, no. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, what so, a difference in a few extra seconds. Right, and we've still got garnish to go, but I'd say, you know, $2, $8. It's crazy, yeah. right? It's still going to taste great, but you eat with your eyes. Let's be honest. We're gonna finish these all up, plate them up, and make it look beautiful, and then take a look at our family style and do them side by side. Now's where it gets cool. Sterling caviar, this is their royal, which is a large to medium egg, semi-firmness, and it just brings an essence of the ocean. 
Oh, black gold, rich, buttery. There's just something about this white sturgeon caviar that Sterling does that just screams traditional elegance. Talk about elevated cuisine. And it's gonna sing with that pecan smoke. Team, you absolutely eat with your eyes. That is a stunning individual portion. And that is an elevated hors d'oeuvre if I've ever seen one. Now, let's take it a little bit more casual with the same exact ingredients, family style. Remember, we've been smoking for the last five minutes. That is just a bubbly, well, <laughs> oh. that's some deliciousness. And these are exactly the same, just different presentations. Yeah, well, we're gonna put, we're gonna finish with parsley. And the reason we go on with parsley for this is a little bit of the flavor profile, but it's mainly to pop. I want, I want contrast and color. Now let me get a little caviar in the center of this, and then we're gonna take the leftover crostinis and we're gonna stand them in a wave formation in the back. Look at how we were able to gratin the top just by leaving it in the grill from the, from the residual heat on the dome. Uh, I think this is going to be a slightly more uh, smoky than this. So, I don't know. Nathan, which one would you go for on date night and which yeah. one would you go for on game day? That's really hard to say. They both look extremely elegant. The family style does seem more ooey gooey. I want to eat that. Yeah. But these little individual babies are gorgeous. Game day, date night. Well, maybe this is date night and this beauty is game day. Date, date game? <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. Big thanks to Lane's Barbecue. Big thanks to Sterling Caviar. Watch this. It's getting silly. That's my bite. That's my freaking bite right there. It's like, it's like I just dove into the ocean, came out, it's 90 degrees, and I lick my lips, and it's the ocean. It's just straight up ocean, and here comes that pecan. I'm going for a ride. That's incredible. Um, folks, again, elegant food does not have to be difficult. That is probably the easiest recipe I've done in my entire life. You're just smoking cream cheese, mixing it all together, and putting some top level quality ingredients together. Uh, if you enjoyed this elevated cuisine or this this fun little dish we did today don't forget to subscribe like and leave us a comment i read all the comments i love i love uh i love hanging out with you guys online love to hang out with you in person from our backyard to yours team cheers happy grilling